All right, so this is a, a little uh, tutorial for Illustrator um, that will uh, blow your mind and for people that do some rave posters and designs and crazy little uh, graphics will find really interesting. Um, so I made a really large um, art board right now. It's in pixels. It's like 2200 by 3500 or something like this. It's really large just to fill the screen. And um, I've uh, filled it with a dark blue and I put it in the background right now. So it's just um, it's just so I can lock it. Um, first thing, first things first, I'm going to make a little tiny little circle. Um, about right here, it doesn't matter really. And just click once and because I'm in pixels, I'm going to make it 20 by 20 pixels. So it's a perfect little circle and it's barely visible from, uh, from your point of view right here. I'm just going to deselect it right here. I'm going to get rid of the fill. I'm going to hit the little no fill. Make sure it's a white fill right here so we can see it. And the stroke is at one point right now, which is fine at this point. Uh, what I want to do right here is I want to go into the effect, hit this toward transform, and then go into transform right here. And what I want to do is I want to move it horizontally by 25 pixels, right? So it just kind of creates a little copy of it, but I want to make 20 copies of it. So it just I just don't just move it horizontally. I make, let's say, 20 copies of it. So it's a cool little filter. The transform effect is a cool little filter to do that. My dog is barking in the background. I'm not sure if you can hear it. Uh, I'm going to go and close the door quickly. Ah, the joys of working from home. Um, so at this point, I just have that one little circle that is repeated 20 times. And I want to go under object, expand appearance. So it's a series of little circles right now. Next, what I want to do is I want to turn that into a brush. So if uh, you don't know where your brush panel is, you go under Windows, uh, brushes right here, which I have it already on the side, in my tools right here, on the side right here. So I, with my object selected right here, I click on the new brush. And I don't want to go calligraphic brush. I want to go to the bottom down here. I want to make it a pattern brush. And I click OK. Um, and I'm going to call it circles. Uh, scales is going to be fixed. I'm not going to touch any of those hands and whatnot. I want to make sure that I flip along and flip across. And I want to go into the fit. I want to go approximate path. Anything else, leave it as is. Click OK. And there it is. So you don't see it because it's a white circle on white, but as you hover over, you see the name circles on it. Okay, so I'm going to put that on the side. Next, I want to create a larger circle. So I'm going to go back to my ellipse tool right here. Click once again. I'm going to make it fairly large. I'm going to make it 650 by 650 pixels so we can see it, what we're doing. Um, I want to center it in my artboard right here, horizontally and vertically. And I want to First, I want to do this first. I want to click on uh, with my direct selection tool, click on one of the anchors right there, select the one anchor right here, and I'm going to cut it. So I'm going to use the shortcut command X or control X on your keyboard, or go under edit right here, and you go cut right here. And that leaves me with only half a circle. And what I want to do now again, go back into edit, paste in front, which is command F or control F, and I have my half circle back. So I have two half circles right here, one half and one half, right? So they're two, two separate objects. So keep it, keep it together right here. Now what I want to do is I want to just select both of them, have my stroke selected right here, make sure I'm, I'm not applying that to the fill, and I want to apply my circles right there. So it just creates this little ring of circles right here. And make it really big right there so we can see it. And you can see that it's not quite a circle, it's a bit overloaded kind of thing. So the idea is just, you know, you can use the scale tool just to pretty make sure that you have it in the center. Press your shift key down, keep it. And then so as you scale it down, it becomes different shapes. So I want to scale it up and I want to make sure that I have approximately circles all the way around right here. So that's that's good for now. Uh, what I want to do is they, they, you can see that the top right here, they're a little tight, a little close to one another. So I want to set one of those half circles. And I just want to notch it over with my arrows uh, from my keyboard. Just kind of move it out of the way a little bit. So I have approximately the same amount of space in between. Go back to fit screen right here. 
And then what I want to do now is I want to go into my blend tool right here and double click on my blend tool. And it's already set up to that, but specified steps. Make sure you have specified steps and not smooth color, specified distance, specified steps. Keep it to align to page, so meaning vertically. And I want to, you know, put, let's say, 30 steps and click OK. And then click on the first one, click on the second one, and this is what it does. It's getting pretty cool already. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that, see, like the circles are getting a little bit strange and it gets a little squirrely. So again, with my, my uh, scaling tool, I want to move it out of the way a little bit. So all the circles are kind of approximately the same size, the same scale, give or take. So if you scale it down, it becomes really, really, really tight. It becomes a little odd. So I want to make it a little bit larger like this, approximately like that. That's good. They're a little bit separated. It's really approximate. It's really what you want to do out of it. Now I want to make sure that I keep a copy of that because I want to demonstrate something else. I'm going to put it on the on the pasteboard right here. I'm going to close my brushes. I'm just going to concentrate on this guy right here. So select that, both objects. And you remember you still have two, two objects and it's a blend tool, right? So if I switch over to my outline preview, all I have is a circle and another oh, half a circle and another half circle, but blending in. Um, if I back to my preview, this is what's happening, right? What I want to do now is I want to expand this object. So I go under Object, Expand Appearance, and that expands just the outer rim, the original um, brush that is applied to my stroke. Again, if I switch back to my preview, it's only on the outside. So I have to select that again, go under Object, Expand, again. So expand only your object. And then you have all of the strokes now, all of these little objects expanded. So if I go in back into my outline preview, you have all of the objects selected. Now, the cool thing begins. Under your uh, width tool right here, you have also all those extra little tools like warp, twirl, uh, pucker, bloat, scallop, crystallize, and wrinkle tool. So I'm going to start with, instead of scalp, I'm going to go with crystallize tool. And the crystallize tool is kind of a, a funky little um, uh, tool. So let's say, just make a quick little squ uh, square out of it. And you can see that you just, you know, you do this and it does that. It crystallizes so wherever you are. It just goes and warps your shape like crazy. So it's got some really cool effects. So what I want to do is I want to select this thing. I want to make sure my crystallize tools is a little larger than my graphics. So right now it's really, really small. So I double click on my tool. Um, I'm going to go, let's say 450 pixels. So it's probably around 650 approximately. Um, show brush size, yes. Complexity one, detail two. And I want to keep the intensity fairly low so it's manageable, so it's a bit more controllable. So I click OK, let's see how big my brush is. It needs to be bigger. I can only do 1000. OK, so I might have to scale yeah, my object down. So scale my object down a little bit so I can use that brush exactly like that, What exactly what I wanted. So I want to make sure that I bring it right in the center, approximately in the center right here. Um, you can create guides to make sure that you uh, you snap it to the center. But in this case, it doesn't really matter. I pressed, you know, you can, what you can do now, you can click you know, once or twice or press and hold. And this is what happens. So I just pressed and clicked about you know a quarter of a second each. So it gets really, really busy. So I'm going to take one step down. There you go. That's a little less. And that creates a weird looking snowflake. So what I want to do now is I want to reduce my stroke. So instead of one point, to make it a little thinner, I want to put it at 0.25. And then we get some crazy effects right here. Um, and then you can use another of those, um, those effects. So you can do the twirl for example, which will rotate it again back in the center and then just press and hold a couple times. And then now you have this crazy looking things and you can see that there's like tons of this very, very, very fine details that are really cool. So you have some potential to create some really, really weird looking sea creatures. Um, and again, I'm just gonna do that I'm going to duplicate that object again, press and hold my Alt uh, or Option key on the, on the back. Go under my object again, expand and expand again. 
And this time again, I'm going to click on select. I mean, um, have uh, only uh, object selected. I mean, click OK. And then I'm going to do another one. So um, instead of the twirl, I'm going to try the, I don't know, let's see, squall, the scallop tool. Again, same thing. My brush is a little smaller. So again, I need to scale this down a little bit. Um, there you go. I'm pressing my option or Alt key and Shift at the same time so it scales from the center. Go back to my uh, scallop tool and I'm just going to click once or twice, see what happens. I'm just pressing and holding just like a tenth of a second and see what it does. So again, it does some really crazy stuff. I'm going to reduce my stroke again so we can see what we're doing. And what I want to do here is I want to bring the twirl tool and I can I'm going to bring it down to, let's say, 300. Again, low intensity so we can control it. But instead of bringing it from the center out, well, you, I could do that again a little bit in the center. But I want to bring it on the side right here and I'm just trying to drag it around. And then go again in the other way and then create some really organic looking shapes. So this filter is this filter and those tools are really cool. You can create some really funky stuff. Um, it's really open to your imagination. Um, go and play. It's endless what you can do. You can kind of semi drag it over here, create some again some sea sea creatures that are just out of this world. And this is the illustrator right there where you can create some really weird stuff. You can just click and drag it as much as you can. And then there you go. It looks like Wolverine's haircut. Another cool aspect is uh, what you can do is you can select your object and instead of having a, a solid white stroke, what you can do is you can apply a gradient. So we can just apply a gradient to your stroke. Double click on your color uh, sliders there, your color nodes. I can switch it to CMYK. I'm going to put in one of them light blue like this, the other one darker blue. So I'm going to pick a CMYK again. Solid, oops, solid cyan, a little bit of yellow, no black, no magenta. So it gets a little tealy kind of color. Just random like this, and this is what happens. You let go of it, and it has all those incredible aspects of colors and gradients. And if you go into warmer colors instead, so you pick your, again, your gradient right here, you double click on your color node, um, make it solid yellow right here, and then the other one, solid red, full magenta, full yellow. And now you have a little fiery looking shape right here. So you get all those crazy gradients happening and depth and it's pretty neat what you can do with those uh, with those little basic shapes that we just played with.